have Fatty Legs, Christy Jordan Fenton, and Margaret Pokiak Fenton. Those are my mom and my grandma's name. It's so wonderful to be able to read and write, and that was my main, you know, item I wanted to do. I wanted, because my sister went to, older sister went to a residential school, and she had some books and she'd read them to me, but I didn't understand, but I just was really, I wanted to learn to read from books. This is Margaret Pokiak Fenton, a woman with a warm aura and a twinkle in her eye. She says it took a long time for her to speak of her past in residential schools, but finally opened up to her inquisitive daughter-in-law, Christy. First off, Margaret doesn't drive, and we are half an hour out in the country, so um, we spend a lot of time in a vehicle together, so uh, um, there's a lot of time for storytelling. But um, for me, my stepfather went to residential school and I had step siblings um, who were Cree and not very proud of that. So when I had children, it was really important for me to make sure they knew everything they possibly could about their culture and so that they would be very proud of who they were. Patricia's story starts off with her strong-willed nature and consistent begging to her father to let her go. I finally wore him down and he said, well, you can go to school in the summertime when we go to the mainland. But he said, I can tell you, you're not going to get along with anybody. You're too strong-willed. <laughs> uh, anyway, when they left me at school after two days, I wish I <laughs> didn't go to school. One day we were driving to town, and Margaret said to me, they used to call me Fatty Legs. And I said, oh? And she said, yeah, when I was a little girl, I went to residential school. And I had assumed that Margaret had probably gone to residential school, but um, it was nothing she had ever talked about. And we hear a lot about it in the news and media nowadays. But at that point, um, nobody was really talking about it publicly. So then she proceeded to tell me about when she went to school um, and she was eight years old and this really mean nun gave her these awful red stockings. And then, um, the children all made fun of her and called her fatty legs and she told me what she did with the stockings it was a secret she kept for almost 65 years so when she told me how um, she got rid of them I was just so impressed by that and I thought oh like we finally found a story that we can tell everybody now that Christy knew she had a story for a huge audience she needed her mother-in-law's permission to publish it one of my daughters was expecting a baby and uh, I went to spend a month with her. She called me every day, can I write the book for you? <laughs> Finally, one day I told my daughter, I said, today when she calls, I'm gonna say, yes, go ahead. She sounded so happy, I think she hit the ceiling. <laughs> it, was a, it was a really triumphant day for me in a lot of ways. One um, is because when I was young, uh, I knew about residential school, but I didn't know a lot about it. And a lot of um, the people that lived in my community were very affected by residential school. There was a lot of drinking and unhealthy behavior from it. Fatty Legs was the debut book, published by Anik Press, sold by Amazon, Chapters, and Indigo. It is also recommended by The Globe and Mail, The Star, and Chatelaine. It has garnered many accolades, prizes, and nominations, something her grandchildren, Diamond and Waylon, are very proud of. That she um, survived residential school and that she didn't let people boss her around as much as the other people. The three follow-up books are Not My Girl, A Stranger at Home, and When I Was Eight. Christy said Fatty Legs needed a follow-up as it's only part of the story. A big factor is when residential school children returned home to their communities. And they couldn't speak, the, like in Margaret's case, she couldn't speak the same language as her mother when she went home. So they couldn't communicate to each other anymore. And that happened to a lot of the survivors where they went home and didn't have the skills they needed to live off the land and, and couldn't communicate. So we decided that we needed to tell Margaret's story and her journey back to fitting into her into her culture again. My other grade fell to the floor to meet the first. And I joined the others in the weeping. The last one, not my girl, on how she ended it, it was really marvelous. Uh, it made me feel good. <laughs>
These four books have now been translated into different languages and a novel study used in many classrooms. If you are interested in reading Fatty Legs, Not My Girl, A Stranger at Home, or When I Was Eight, you can look for them in your local library or purchase them at most major bookstores.